uh, one of the things that um, is very helpful is non-dimensionalization of the variables. And so to do the non-dimensionalization of the variables, what we can look at are these dimensionless variables. So these variables, um, theta again is the uh, dimensionless concentration, and that's represented by CI, which is your unknown concentration, minus the initial concentration in the slab, C0, divided by C1, which again the bulk concentration around the slab, minus C0. Um, the dimensionless position is uh, shown by eta, and that is y divided by the half thickness L, and the dimensionless time tau is T times the diffusion coefficient divided by the half thickness L squared. So from these variables, we can take this equation, the governing equation, use these variables, rearrange the terms CI, CI, and be able to plug in um, T into this and uh, Y over here, CI over here, and you can rearrange this into a non-dimensionalized equation. You can also use these dimensionless variables then to convert these initial conditions, boundary conditions, into non-dimensionalized um, initial conditions and boundary conditions, and that's what I'm going to do now. So without going through all the math, because it's in the book and we're just doing a quick review, this is what the uh, governing equation is now going to look like when it's switched from um, this into non-dimensionalized terms. Um, the, the initial conditions and the boundary conditions, so if we first take a look at the first initial condition, that t is less than or equal to zero, tau will always be less than or equal to zero. Because again, if you plug in zero right here, tau would also be equal to zero. So from zero to L for our y, for eta, it's going to be equal from zero to one. Because again, if we plug in zero into this equation right here, you get eta equals zero. If you plug in L into this equation right here, you're going to get L over L, which is going to be equal to 1. So that's how we get from 0 to 1 when we transform it to non-dimensionalized terms. Finally, the concentration is going to go from C0, and your normalized concentration will be 0. And that's because right here, if we put in CI is equal to C0, you're going to get C0 minus C0, and that will equal theta equal to 0. Same goes for these other boundary conditions. Um, 8 is going to be equal to 0 because again y is equal to 0 so y 0 over L is going to be 0. Your same reason here for the concentration gradient is also going to be equal to 0. And finally your um, other boundary condition since it's at y equals L it will be your normalized concentration would be um, L over L so that would be equal to 1 and your normalized concentration since it's C1 plug in C1 here you got C1 minus C0 C1 minus C0 equals 1 so these are our now our new non-dimensionalized uh, governing equation as well as initial conditions and now it's a little bit easier to work through this to be able to solve um, the concentration profile and what's really nice is in the book in the book here, they figure 6.19, they show a uh, graph of dimensionless position and normalized concentration. And again, that's y over L and, and there's your theta. So each one of these lines are tau, which again is the dimensionless time. So here you can see the equation for tau, dijt divided by L squared. Um, so what's handy about this equation is uh, this graph here, sorry, is that you don't need to know, um, you don't have, we don't need to worry about the uh, correct um, normalized concentration uh, because it's a little bit tricky to solve with the PDEs um, that it's already in graphical terms and as well as tabulated in, in, um, in tables. 
So you can always refer to this table to quickly get a really decent estimation of what your normalized concentration would be or the position. So if you're given your positions and your time and your DIJ, you can easily find um, your normalized concentration and back out the concentration just by um, following along the graph. If you had, if it was 50% into the tissue or the slab, you can just go right up along here and if your time happens to be your uh, non-dimensionalized time 0.25, you could just follow the lines over and be able to calculate uh, your concentration term uh, using the non-dimensionalized variables and vice versa if you need to find the diffusion coefficient, the position, um, you'll be, you'll, you, you'll hopefully be able to figure out the other terms to be able to use this graph and back calculate uh, one of those terms. Another important part about this graph is that you can see um, how the, as, con as time increases, that the, uh, these lines become more and more horizontal because over time, the solute diffusing into the slab is going to get to a concentration where the concentration is going to be the same all the way throughout the slab over a certain period of time. And so as you can see, it gets more horizontal as the time increases. So this horizontal line here at the top, we can estimate it maybe to be close to 2 um, as non-dimensionalized time. So it takes uh, about um, uh, tau is equal to 2 to reach a point of steady state where the concentration throughout the slab is the same. Uh, so you can easily figure out that the non-dimensionalized, or sorry, the time to reach steady state if tau is equal to 2, then 2 is equal to dij t l squared so the time to reach steady state would be T equals 2L squared over Dij. So if you're asked to figure out how much time it would take to reach the steady state, that would be um, the equation that, that you can use to estimate that time.